I'm very high on Grixis to win this, this weekend as a response to decks like Amiel Bloom and Tron doing well last weekend. One thing that will it kind of be interesting in this particular matchup is how good is Kologon's command in this matchup. Now, of course, it is destroyed artifact and shock against Affinity, and there are two main deck copies, but now we get to really kind of see it in action and see how Twin lines up against Affinity, and it's very clear what Osip is doing right here at the start. Is there is a Mox Opal, an Ornithopter, a Darkstale Citadel. The follow-up now is a copy of Springleaf Drum. He is chaining off, and now there's a Steel Overseer. Got to put Andrew to the test right away of having an answer to that creature. Well, you know, this is the test that Affinity puts you to. Do you have a removal spell or not? Osip's hand might be really bad if the Steel Overseer dies. There's not a lot going on the table, even though there's a bunch of permanents. Well, it's not going to live, as there's a copy of Lightning Bolt. Modern's best removal spell has taken care of Steel Overseer. No, so that's a man who needed a welding jar. A little late to the party there with the old welding jar. There is a welding <laughs> jar now. Good draw step. Whatever, Art Bell Ravager's good. Osip's going to go eat in there. There's Moxel. He's going to eat. He's going to replay Moxel. We'll pass the turn back. He's empty handed. Yep. He's got an Art Bell Ravager, and we can see what he can do on this particular board. And you can see the charm of Kologon's command against Affinity in spots like this. Wouldn't be bad here, that's for sure. Though the Welding Jar is pretty nice. Here are Serum Visions from Andrew. He'll draw a card, and I'll scry two. Snapcaster Mage was the draw. So we'll take a look at those top two cards, and we'll see where they are headed. Also has a copy of Lightning Bolt in hand. The Welding Jar and Arcbound Ravager have that covered, it seems. Both cards go to the bottom there for Phillips. He'll just pass the turn back with no land to play. Lovodovich will draw a card. Again, he is empty-handed. He looks like he has a spell to play. And it's a copy of Etched Champion, a card that's very good against Grixis. Yes, very hard for them to kill. This is not your best card in the combo matchups. The matchups are about speed. Etched Champion's pretty poor, but... Any threat and removal type of matchup, as champion does some pretty good work. Now, many, many moons ago, Lebedavish did win a Grand Prix with Affinity. It was much different times then, but back in 2004 at Grand Prix Orlando, he was your champion with Affinity. Made a deep run at Grand Prix New Jersey many moons ago. He's been playing this deck for a very long time. And earlier this year when we did Grand Prix Miami, he got ninth place on tiebreakers. So he can still game. And of course, he is a former Pro Tour champion with three Pro Tour top baits. One of those players who's just on the outside looking in of the Magic Hall of Fame. One, one more big finish. I think one more Pro Tour top eight, and he really starts to enter the conversation in earnest. Also going to start sacrificing a few artifacts here to make this Ravager a little bit larger and get some relevant points of damage in. Start by sacrificing a Springleaf Drum. Ornithopter, that's not doing all that much. He'll sacrifice there. It's going to become a four-power Archmon Ravager now. See if he wants to go any bigger. Doesn't appear that he does, so get in for four points of damage, bring Phillips down to 14, pass that turn back. And I like Ozip trying to turn on a bit of pressure here. Also allows him to keep the Welding Jar and still, if he, even if he has to use the Welding Jar on something, he still has Metalcraft for the S champion. So very nice distribution of resources here. Ozip with a fast clock and a lot of protection against removal spells. See if Phillips can keep up with things. It did look like he drew a land for the turn, so he'll play an island. And now it's a copy of Snapcaster Mage, which will allow him to flashback Serum Visions. Serum Visions will be flashback, which means a card is coming here for Phillips. And then Scry 2. And Osip does not mind this turn at all. The, really, the only thing that he's concerned about is Andrew executing the combo. Osip doesn't have a lot of interaction against the game one. And as long as the game looks like this, Andrew's not going to be able to keep up. He, he really needs to combo out here, especially with Osip having a large Arcbound Ravager and an S Champion. Phillips will pass the turn back over to Lebedovich. Lebedovich going to untap and draw. A couple of lands out there for Osip. If he does draw a three-mana spell, he won't be able to play it. He does have copies of Master of Ethereum and another copy of Etch Champion in his main deck. And even a card like Cranial Plating right now, he would not be able to play and equip, unfortunately. Yep. That is the concession that Osip made when he uh, made a move here to speed up his clock. He's also opting to keep that Welding Jar. does not want to let that go. Ornithopter was the draw. He does play that. He'll attack with both of his creatures. Snapcatcher Mage looking to jump in front of the Arcbound Ravager. So where things get interesting is how much damage does Osip want to try to push through here? He could put Phillips on a two-turn clock if he says maybe eat your Ornithopter and move things on to the Edge Champion. Yeah, he can make a pretty big push here. There is, a, there is some charm in getting this Edge Champion to be a 7-7 seven seven mm -hmm. with Andrew at 14. That's a two-turn clock, and it's very hard for Andrew to interact with it. And I wouldn't be surprised, especially with the Welding Jar out there's protection and Metalcraft turned on, if he were to make that move. Yep, and that's exactly what he's going to do. He'll eat on a Thopter. He'll move the counters over to Edge Champion. Edge Champion will come across for seven points of damage. 
And Phillips, I, I can't imagine as much a way to stop this outside of something like a cryptic command to tap the team down for a turn. Right. There's no long-term solution at this point. Yeah. And Phillips is going to play a steam fence untapped. He's going to go down to five. And he does have a copy of Cryptic Command in hand, so Cryptic Command is going to probably go into fog mode here. It really doesn't have much of a choice. Yep. This is one of those times. This here comes Snapcaster. Means Love is going to go down to 18, where Edge Champions text protection from all those colors. Very, very powerful. Love it will draw a card. Osip says, I'm going to go to my attack step. You have to have Cryptic Command or you're dead. And we know that Andrew does. So there is a copy of Cryptic Command. That'll tap the team and draw a card here for Phillips. Dark Sosilo was the draw for Lebedovich. who places that into play and passes the turn back. Not sure Phillips really has a way out of this. Doesn't have a Deceiver Exarch or Pestermite in play, so no Splinter Twin to peel. Yeah, essentially, Andrew needs to Cryptic Command every turn, make land drops, and then get the combo into play. That's yeah. asking quite a bit. And certainly with only two Cryptic Commands in the deck as well. And that assumes that Osip draws nothing relevant for the remainder of the game. Yeah. This is just with what's on the table right now. Andrew has not found a winning combination. He will concede the game. So Osip Lovodovich is going to win game number one here over Andrew Phillips. Affinity up a game over Grixis to win. As both players are moving to the sideboard, we will do the exact same. What does make things a little bit interesting there, you take a look at what Osip saw in that game. Mm -hmm. You saw two islands, two steam vents, a Snapcaster Mage, a Lightning Bolt. There's no real giveaway of what Andrew's up to. You can assume twin, but you could also maybe put him on something like Jeskai. Yeah, there's no guarantee that, I mean, Andrew, all those cards have the look of a Splinter Twin deck. And given that Andrew didn't really interact very often that game, he wasn't playing a lot of counter spells, it'd be weird if it wasn't a Splinter Twin deck. I think Osip's going to sideboard accordingly. Also, no black mana was shown, so there's no showing of a card like Tassiger or Cold mm -hmm. Command either, though Grixis Twin is a pretty popular deck, so we'll see how Lebedavish does sideboard. Same can, set, same can be said, excuse me, for Phillips, and we'll start with him and his Rending Volley, his thoughts these two Spell Sky, a Rakdos Charm, two Anger of the Gods, a Fulminator Mage, a Counter Flux, another copy of Kolagon's Command to go along with the two in the main deck, two Leyline of Sanctity, a Jace Architect of Thought, a Karanos God of Storms, and a Batter Skull when he's looking to play a little bit more of a fair game. What do we like here and why? Well, I think this is still a combo matchup here because of the speed that Osa brings to the table, and even certain cards, you you know, Karanos, Batterskull, I think they're too slow or too easy for Osa to work around. So I, see, I still think this is a combo matchup here. I think the two copies of Anger of Gods, the copy of Rakdos Charm, there's a lot of work here. The Kolagon's Command is a great upgrade as well. So I think that Andrew's going to keep the combo intact, uh, sideboard in some more removal spells, but still try to combo out. Uh, for Lebedavich, he's got two Ancient Grudge, two Whip Flares, two Blood Moons, two Thought Seizes, two copies of Slaughter Pact, two Spell Skites, another copy of Edge Champion, a Spell Pierce, and a Dismember. Osip's got some very good options here if he expects the combos in Andrew's deck, which I believe he does. Two copies of Spell Skite, the Dismember, the Slaughter Packs, and the Spell Pierce all do very good work to that end. I think the additional copy of Edge Champion can also come in here. As you saw, Andrew had quite a bit of trouble working around that card. That is a lot of cards to sideboard in here, and Affinity is the type of deck where you need to keep a critical mass of artifacts in for your powerful cards like Arcbound, Ravager, and Cranial Planning to function. So I don't know if he's going to want to bring in all those cards, but there's legitimate arguments for the cards I just mentioned. A lot of options. Now, Slaughter Pact is the one that really stands out to me on the sideboard because, you know, that's a card we haven't really seen much recently, and a card that's very good against Twin decks. Right, I mean, you know, you sometimes see it in, in Jund and Obzon sideboards, but it's not like those decks are really straining to find removal spells that interact with the combo. And most of the time, people are boarding out the combo against those decks anyway, so uh, boarding in a copy of Slaughter Pact is not really the most effectual thing. Here it's going to be great because it's a speed matchup. Sometimes Andrew's going to get draws where it's, you know, turn three Exarch or Pestermite into turn four Twin. Osip's going to tap out. Looks like the coast is clear. He's going to go for it and, and Slaughter Pack and blow him out. Well, these players will shuffle up here for game number two. The underway here in just a moment. And again, we want to thank you guys for joining us. Cedric Phillips, Patrick Sullivan, of course, Nick Miller and Ken Crocker in the sideboard along with the rest of the SCG Live crew bringing you Grand Prix Charlotte. SCG, at SCG Live, excuse me. Hashtag GP Charlotte. For your tweets all weekend long, we're looking for your questions all weekend long. We'll be taking them on air. So if you guys have any thoughts on Modern, maybe some of the new cards that have been unveiled from Magic Origins. A couple have started becoming down the pipeline. Oh, I've not seen any of the spoiled cards. Oh, Besides, nice. the Planeswalkers. From yes, of course. Yeah, but of course. If there's been more coming down the pipeline. Although I did read Mark Rosewater's article about the Evergreen keywords. Yep. They were shifting some of that around. I guess Scry is now becoming just 
something in the R&D arsenal for every set and every block, much in the same way that, you know, not to the same extent that flying and trample will show up, but it's that kind of keyword now, where yeah. it will just show up in places. Which is pretty cool, I think. As opposed to being tied to blocks. So fire your questions away again at SAG Live, hashtag GP Charlotte, or you can send them directly at me and my iPad, at Cedric J. Phillips, or at Basic Mountain. And I like the logic there. I mean, every time, single time they introduce a mechanic that has some sort of synergy-based pull to it, they feel the obligation to make some sort of smoothing keyword so people can find you know, the A and B they're trying to slap together a little more often. And if you feel the urge to make one of those keywords in every single block, why not just have Scry, which is relatively simple, works in the way that you want it to work, and then players don't have to memorize a new keyword every block. Just have Scry. And I like Scry. Yeah. A lot of, it's a very popular keyword. Both players take a look at their opening hands. Andrew Phillips will be on the play here with his Grixis twin deck. And this will be interesting to see just how good Kologon's command is against Affinity. You have to imagine it's quite a card in the matchup. But he hasn't drawn it yet. With, with those Substraw there that game, Kolgon's Command would have done very little because of the Welding Jar, the Artbound Ravager. He could have worked around Kolgon's Command that game. Andrew going to take a mulligan very quickly. Lebedovich is going to take a look at his opening hand. He's unsure if he wants to keep or mulligan. Phillip's going to take a look at six cards here. It looks like Lebedovich is happy enough with his seven. One thing about Affinity, it's not an deck you want to mulligan very much with. No, all about critical mass. Yeah. The same reason that you can't sideboard in seven spells easily, you just need this base of artifacts to make your payoff cards powerful enough to win games. Because there is a lot of garbage in the Affinity deck. There is oh, a lot yeah. of Ornithopters and Mem Knights and Signal Pests. Cards that don't win the game on their own, they need the support of the real power. Here's a copy of Pluto Delta to start things off for Phillips. Phillips considering a watery grave here. He's going to go with the steam vents, though. Already down to 17. See if perhaps a Serum Visions is on the way. And there's a fun question for you, because we are going to have a Serum Visions. This is, you know, the, the one cantrip that we're allowed here in Modern. That's not true. I believe Sleight of Hand is, is legal. There's some oh, other, there's some other options. True. Cataxium I, Probe. They're, they're different cards, obviously. But. I do forget the Sleight of Hand is legal because no one really plays it. Would Opt be too good? Um, I'm not sure if Opt would be too good. It would it's, a, it's about in the same class as Serum Visions in my mind. There's just no real incentive for R&D to put cards like that into the format. They just lower variance and make games play out the same way. So Serum Visions is, is powerful, and the, you know that's the thing that the blue player gets to do. But I don't think there's a lot to be gained by doing more of it. Lebedovich is going to start off with a Springleaf Drum. There's a Mem Knight that'll allow for a Vault Scourge to be played. Lebedovich using the Phyrexian Mana on Vault Scourge. He's going to go down to 18. And the land for the turn was a copy of Ink Moth Nexus. So this is the garbage party that I talked about. This <laughs> is why you need to have you know your, your cards like Artbound Ravager and Cranial Plating to make this deck succeed. Slow build to the real stuff. Yeah. you got to get the trash out there first. Right. Affinity without the payoff cards does get draws that can't beat a draft deck. But with oh, the yeah. payoff cards, it's extremely powerful. Here comes Midnight and Vault Scourge into the red zone. Lebedovich going to gain a life, of course, from the lifelink from Vault Scourge. Phillips going to take some damage. Now here's a copy of Steel Overseer. Phillips going to sacrifice Blue to Delta very, very quickly. We'll see what land he wants to search up here. So it looks like he's going to have an answer to the Steel Overseer. How dare you talk about Affinity like that? Couldn't beat a draft deck. Unbelievable. Some of its draws can't. Your Vault Scourge, Mem Knight, Signal Pest type of draws sometimes cannot beat a Giant Spider. But with the good cards, <laughs> all of a sudden, you, you see how the deck starts to work a little bit. 2-4 reach. That's it. You win. All right. Yeah. Well, I'm done. Right, well, Ozip's got one Galvanic Blast in his main deck, so he's not drawing dead to Giant Spider. But it's still... <laughs> Not the card he wants to be playing against. Uh, Roman is going to take care of Steel Overseer. A little surprised to see that in the deck after sideboard. Roman not great against this low to the ground affinity deck. Yeah, it, Roman's really good when you're the one pushing ahead, when you're the one ahead on the board. Todd Anderson spoke about that in his team or twin deck tech or interview with us yesterday. You want to get underneath people to really leverage Roman. Hard to do against affinity. Yeah. But I was going to come across here yet again. You saw Phillips on his turn. Just play him out and pass the turn back. See if Lebedovich has any sort of interaction for maybe a twin draw here from Phillips. I believe he may have the one two punch in hand. Silver's here didn't resolve last turn. Makes you wonder if he's going to try to cast it this turn. 
There's a Blink Moth Nexus. Here's a copy of Springleaf Drum. Now remember, Osip's got some good sideboard cards against the combo here. Remains to be seen if he has them, but dismember especially Slaughter Pack. Yeah, Slaughter Pack's the big one for me. Not a lot of players are going to see that coming. And with Lemonovich just playing Springleaf Drum and passing the turn back, that's going to cause Phillips to slow down a little bit, you may imagine. Though, here is a Deceiver Exarch. That's going to slow down that Blink Moth Nexus. Will Phillips try to go for the combo here? Well, he's playing Steam Fence on tap, so it certainly feels that way. There is Splinter Twin. Does Lebedovich have an answer? The answer is no. He tried to bluff one. Phillips went for it anyway, and he was correct in his read. So Grixis Twin going to tie things up here against Affinity. It does make you wonder how those sideboarded those. Since, again, he didn't see a lot in game number one. I would be surprised if Osip did not bring in at least some of his creature removal in. Maybe Andrew is playing some sort of weird is it control deck, but uh, that looked like had all the makings of a twin deck game one that just didn't draw the combo. So, uh, and it looks like Ozip is not even reaching for a sideboard right now. So I imagine whatever removal he wants for this matchup was already in his deck for game two, just didn't happen to draw it. And that must be the case. It's neither player going back to the sideboard. They're shuffling up and getting ready for game number three here very, very quickly. So. Lodovich will be on the play. We'll see if he can have more explosive draw with this affinity deck for game number three. Jacob Brooks asking, Patrick, what do you guys think about the red-white Village Bell Ringer Restoration Angel version of Twin Decks? Now, I'm assuming that he's talking about Jeskai as opposed to just being a red-white deck with Splinter Twin and Kiki Jiki. I think it's harder for that build of the deck to convert into a normal control deck in the matchups where that's what you want to do. That's why I like the Grixis build most of all, because I think it's the one with the smoothest conversion into a Grixis control deck. I think that you... You have to be able to shift yeah. into a control deck, I, I believe. That's certainly a version of the deck that we have seen people play before with Restoration Angel and Kiki Jiki, some number of, of Village Bell Ringers as well. That, that deck has surfaced throughout Modern's history, but I, I think I agree with you. You know, if, if you want to do this twin thing, you're either going to be just Blue Red or Grixis. Yeah, I think that a lot of, the, a lot of those kind of decks, like the Restoration Angel build, is interchangeable with Grixis Twin game one. All, all these decks are about the same thing. It's the same number of combo pieces, same amount of disruption, same amount of card drawing. You know, it's kind of suited to taste. Post-board is where you see the nuances with the decks really surfaces. And right now, uh, I like where Grixis is more than the other builds of the deck. Samuel Mitchell wondering what we think about Merfolk splashing green for to collect a company. For me, why splash? Right, I like Merfolk with Mutavolts and really solid mana and yeah. taking no damage off of its lands. Uh, Collected Company is pretty powerful, but I think once you want Collected Company, you probably want Thassa in the deck as well. And maybe that's a card you do want. And if you're interested in Thassa, then I can see the argument. But uh, I was really impressed by the Mono Blue build that we had at the uh, the top four, I believe. Yeah, Richard I mean, Adams last week on the Season 2 Invitational. That deck impressed me. Yeah. Uh, that was better than I thought it was going to be. And I, I would build something close to that if I was inclined to play Merfolk. Yeah, if you want to talk about kind of a techie card to play in that deck, I was really impressed by Monastery Siege. Yeah. Really, think, really good against Burn. Oh, yeah. Phillip's going to send his hand back. It can only be, it can only be so bad. Yep. And the matchup's where it's good because of the, the Dragon's mode, it's really hard to beat. Yeah, the interesting thing about Monster Siege, I think some people may have forgotten, you think about the second mode has that Frost Titan-esque mode, but it's also Frost Titan for you, which means right. that it's actually just a three-mana chill. Yep. And given what his chill has done against red decks and how Burn is targeting you with their Burn spells, of course, you know, Lava Spike has to cost three mana. Lava Spike at one mana isn't even great. At three mana, it, it's horrible. Yeah, it's not It's not good in that kind of matchup, which is more about playing to the board. It's kind of a Grim Lava Mancer matchup, and uh, your Lava Spikes go from bad to really bad yeah. with this card in play. Phil's going to take a look at six cards. Dark Souls Citadel, a passing of the turn by Lebedovich. That's it for turn one. Well, you have to assume he's got a really explosive turn two, then, yeah. if this is his turn one play. Phillips is going to play his defense untapped, and now here is Serum Visions. So he'll draw a card, of course, Scry 2. We'll see where these cards will go. Again, Phillips on six cards this game. Does have a Lightning Bolt and a Cryptic Command in hand. Lebedovich on seven, though turn number one was very honest. Colgon's command as well. Looks like Andrew's hand flush with removal. There's a Darks. Darks Hill Citadel, excuse me. Here's Mox Opal. There's Nets Champion. And that's the card that won Lebedovich game number one. But it was off the back of Arkbound Rabbit for making it very large. A 2-2 two -two 
on turn two. That's not all that impressive. It's slow for the matchup, but if it's paired with Artbound Ravager or Cranial Plating, then things start getting really good for Ozip. I'm a lot more interested then, that's for sure. Spell Sky and Levada was just hand at this point. That's the protection he's looking for against Twin. There's a copy of Inkmoth Nexus. There's a copy of Arcbound Ravager. Now he's turning up the heat a little bit. And normally, Arcbound Ravager is the real prize. But Osip wanted the test spell with the Ravager first because spell is so good in this situation. Yep. It shuts down a lot of Andrew's removal, prevents the combo from being an issue. Lightning Bolt's going to go after the Ravager, so I think we're going to see a little bit of movement here now from Lividovich. I mean, Osip can play this straight up and just say, okay, move it on to my edge champion. Now I have a 3 3. Yep. Perhaps he goes a little bit bigger, though. Well, Depends I on the contents of the hand, of He course. wants to preserve Metalcraft also. He's got a Mox in play. He's got the Edge Champion. So I, I think Osip's going to be pretty conservative with this Lightning Bolt. It wouldn't surprise me if he just let it resolve. Maybe he sacrifices one expendable artifact. If he has another Mox in his hand, for example, that's a good time to cash in. But uh, I would be surprised if Osip did anything too crazy. This is the tricky part. This is the math part of Affinity. But okay, how many, you know, how can I basically close this game out as fast as I possibly can? Because right now, 18, if you were to make, you know, if you were to put four counters on the Ravager and then move on to the champion, you got a three turn clock. But you can also say, you know what? You'll probably play some lands that will deal you damage mm -hmm. in untapped Ravnica lands or, or fetch lands or what have you. So he's just going to sacrifice Mox Opal, make this into a 4 4. He's still got Metalcraft. He still has Spell Skite, attack here for four points of damage. Yeah, this is nice. It's a, it's a pretty fast clock here. He's not immediately concerned about the combo. Andrew needs to have a removal spell for the spell guide to be able to execute that. Good clock that's hard for Andrew to interact with. Now might be a very, very good time to be playing Edge Champion. I know Osip has made a split on the card. He's got two Edge Champions and two Master Ethereums in his main deck. He's got the third Edge Champion in the sideboard. Certainly good in this matchup. Yeah, Edge Champion is just a little low in, you know, the speed matchups is just not doing very much. Yeah. And that's a matchup where Master of Ethereum really shines. So splitting the difference and then in the post-board games, you can be more focused on one or the other. Snapcaster Mage does flashback a Serum Visions. This is a turn where if Lebedovich has a card like Cranial Plating, this gets out of control pretty quickly, but looks to be a more honest turn. Just going to fire up an Ink Moth Nexus, come across here for a little bit, in fact, not a little bit of regular damage. Got to cover all right. sides. A little column A, a little column B. Absolutely. Phillips down to 10 and has one Infect. There's a Polluted Delta for Phillips. We are Tom Ross, Poison Counter, from his Invitational win last year in the mm -hmm. Open Series. And that Polluted Delta, big draw there for Andrew as he was missing Black Mana, and now the Colgon's commands in his hand, they are turned on. Yep. And that's the scary one, right? The, you know, you really want to see how good this card is against Affinity. You know, it's obvious that it would be good in, in the matchup because of the text on the card. That's right, he's finally drawn one. We'll see how it actually has an effect on this particular game. Levadovich ready to go to the attack step. Looks like he's going to start by firing up Ink Moth Nexus, perhaps. We'll see. Well, now he's in a spot where Shatter plus Shock is really powerful if he fires up the Nexus. Love this play from Osa. Likewise. He, he's aware that Colgon's command is now a potential issue here. If he fires up the Nexus, he's likely to just lose it for nothing, along with the Spell Skite. Going to come across here for four. Very sharp. Four damage will be dealt. Phillips is going to go down to six. He'll sacrifice his Blue Delta, go down to five. We'll see if the next land enters the battlefield. Tapped or untapped? There's also just not a lot for Osip to be to gain from putting one Infect on Andrew. Absolutely. The, it, all other things being equal, it, it looks unlikely that that's going to be really be coming up this game. And so no reason to risk additional removal spells. There's a basic swamp. But what Osip can do here, you know, maybe he loses the spell skite to Kologon's command. It looks like that'll probably be the case. But he's got Metalcraft locked in with those two Dark Cell Citadels and Edge Champion. Yep. I'm not going anywhere. The concern is now, if you're on Osip's side, there is a path if Andrew has Colgon's command. Next turn, you knock him down to one if you have nothing to follow up with and you're vulnerable to the combo. Yep. There is Colgon's command. Spell Sky, you're going to have to leave. And probably discard a card will be the other mode. Yep. Now, what you can't see in Limit Officer's hand, or perhaps you can if you got a sharp eye, he does have a copy of Slaughter Pact in hand. I think he also may have his sideboarded Spell Pierce as well. Okay. 
We've talked about it many times. You draw those sideboard cards in this format, your chances of winning certainly go up since they're so powerful. In this situation, you've seen just how good Spell Sky can be. Slaughter Pact in hand, protecting against the combo. And even the Spell Pierce looks pretty good if he wants to use it here. Yeah. Just... So I'm certainly giving some thought here if he does have Spell Pierce in hand. This seems like a pretty good spot to use a Spell Pierce here. Uh, Osip's only got a single source of colored mana here, so he doesn't want his hand to get bottlenecked with colored mana spells and not be able to deploy them all efficiently. And you have an opponent casting a pretty good spell here and can't pay for Spell Pierce. Mm -hmm. uh, this seems attractive. I guess the thinking is, you know, if, if Osip feels like he has to uh, use Cryptic Commands to beat him, maybe those are juicier targets. Yeah, Osip has opted to let Colligan's kind of... Colligan's Command Resolve, excuse me. Spell Sky's dead. Destroy target artifact mode. Discard a card. And discard a dismember. But Colligan's Command is pretty tame on this board now. There's nothing to shatter. Yeah. Nothing to shock. Making Osip discard a card doesn't do very much. And, and this is some pretty tight play from Osip. Where the Colligan's Command could be something he has to play around here and making sure it does as little as possible. It's very telling how people kind of view Call Against Command. Last weekend at the Season 2 Invitational and our Modern Open on the Open Series, players didn't really play Affinity because yep. they were really scared of the card because the hype was so big on the card. As, as Affinity players maybe have played against it more, they say, you know what, I, I can beat this card. I mean, look what that champion's well, doing right there's now. There's also a big difference, you know, when you're talking about a deck like this versus Jund. Jund is so saturated with removal yep. that you run out of resources and then Colgon's Command gets everything. And there, it's hard to avoid that. But I was looking to go to the attack step. Here's a Deceiver XR. Now that cannot tap down that champion. It can certainly target that Glimmer Void, though, and that's not a bad target at all. But I was going to fire up his Ink Moth Nexus with that mana, it appears. Yeah, doesn't really care if, Osa, uh, if Andrew rather wants to use a Lightning Bolt on this Nexus. The game's not really about that, and so... It's a free, in fact, if he wants it. And he does take it. There's another copy of Glimmer Void and passing the turn back. So colored mana at the ready. Phillips at one, Lebedovich at 18. Lebedovich sitting pretty right now with that slaughter pack in hand. Yeah. But also that edge champion, which cannot be stopped. This is also combo or cryptic command or bust. Yep. I mean, this is lethal and removal spells are not going to help Andrew very much in the spot. There is a Cryptic Man in hand. However, somebody doesn't have three blue mana at this point. And being at one life, a fetch line's certainly not going to help. And a Ravnica Shock Land, well, you can't even play that untapped. And you mentioned Remand, a card you weren't really a fan of here uh, in the matchup that you saw in game two. And Andrew also choked with that in hand. Yeah. Remand, a card that's really good in kind of these mid-range slog fests and can actually be really good in the blue mirrors as well. Todd Anderson, we've seen him use that to great effect in these matchups, remanding his own spells. Yep. But a matchup like this where things are just so low to the ground and spells cost one, two, and at most three mana, really not at its best in this matchup. Remand is not great when you are behind. Remand is one of the more powerful cards in all of modern when you are ahead. And this is a matchup where it's pretty hard for Andrew to be the one that's ahead unless he's killing Osip in one shot with the combo. Well, but I'm just going to draw a card. Because all Phillips could do was pass the turn back. I don't think we'll say anything too fancy here from Osip. You just put him in the test by saying, I'm going to go to my attack step. Mm -hmm. Let's see what you can do. And taking a look at Phillips' mana, again, he only has two sources of blue mana, so Cryptic Command doesn't even work its way into the equation here. There's your attack. And that is going to get the job done. Osip Obadovich is going to win this match here over Andrew Phillips. Two games to one. The Pro Tour Venice champion is 2-0 with Affinity. Takes down Grixis Twin. Both decks look to be pretty well positioned this weekend, but Affinity maybe more so is able to get by the Colagons Commander. And, and you see a smile here on Osa's face, and that was a really nice game three. Not the easiest matchup. Affinity doesn't interact too well with the combo. He's playing against multiple copies of Colagons Command. His sequencing was really tight there, understood the value of Edge Champion in the matchup. Andrew couldn't stop it at all. And Osip was able to really take the win out of sales of multiple copies of Colagons Command. The first one did very little. And the second one, Andrew conceded with it still in his hand. It's always fun to talk to Affinity players when a new hate card comes out for Affinity. And there have been so many o over the years. The cards like Shatterstorm, Creeping Corrosion, Ancient Grudge. The list goes on and on and on. Kolagon's Command is just another in that list. And, you know, for the Affinity players who've been playing Affinity for a while, you think of Osip Obadovich, uh, Paul Ritzel, 
Alex Mashleton. It's like, okay, well, are, are you scared of this one? Are you scared of this one? And most of the time, it's, I'm scared of Ancient Grudge. Well, all the time, you know, a card like Kologon's Command, it's three mana. Three mana is a lot in this format. And in a weird way, a card like Kologon's Command can end up helping a deck like Affinity quite a bit. 